Well, here we go. Another video, another review. This time it is the Nodal Ninja Mecca. Well, hello and welcome again, you lovely people. Um, as I say, today I am doing a video review of the brand new Nodal Ninja Mecca. Um, I've been using this panoramic head now, robotic panoramic head, for a few weeks. Uh, I had a unit kindly sent to me to test out, have a play around with, uh, get used to, and we'll get into that. There is quite a lot of uh, getting used to. And um, I've been very, very impressed so far. Um, there is quite a steep learning curve to it. And I have at times found it a bit cumbersome, um, but you know, I am slowly getting used to it as with anything robotic. Uh, some people may say that it's better to, to just stick to doing it the manual way. Uh, there are benefits to using a automated head uh, over a manual head. Uh, which we will get into. But first of all, I just wanted to show you through what comes in the packaging. Um, first of all, you get this really, really nice sort of sturdy carry case. Uh, it's quite heavy, so you do need to bear that in mind when you're uh, packing it with your bag and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, so if we open it up, um, we've got the lower rotator, which is this bit here. Um, this comes all um, sort of pre-assembled pre with the Nodal Ninja 6 in this kit. So you've got the lower rail of the Nodal Ninja 6 here, and this is the uh, lower rotator unit. Um, you get a ton of bags with screws and Allen keys, and to be honest, I don't know what most of this is for, um, but I'm, I'm sure it's for something. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's just nice to know that if anything, if you do need to replace anything on this, then, uh, then you've got the stuff ready waiting for you. Um, then you've got the upper rotator unit and the, and the new controller, which is here, okay? Now the controller basically just sticks to the side of the unit itself. Um, if you don't get this with the Nodal Ninja 6, uh, then it is pretty easy to, to assemble. There is a video um, to show the assembly um, instructions, which I will, uh, I'll pop a link to in the description so you can see how that's all done. Um, and the great thing with this is it's powered by two batteries. So if I just remove one of these, um, it's powered by these, these batteries here, um, and there's two of them. So it's gonna give you plenty of power um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I've, I've used this for lengthy, lengthy periods and the battery percentage has only dropped by about 20, about 30, 30% or so. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely gonna, gonna last you for a, a decent shoot. Um, so other, th other things on here, um, you've got the, if I just pull these cables out here, I'll show you in a second um, how this all fits together, basically, and how we, how we get it onto the tripod and get it set up and turned on. Um, but you've got a, a control cable there, which basically plugs into the top of the unit, and then that plugs into the bottom of your camera, okay? Um, so that will basically control um, the, the shutter on your camera itself. And then this, this cable here plugs into the lower part of the, uh, of the rotator here. Okay, um, so without further ado, let's uh, hop up and um, have a quick look at how this is all set up. Okay, so um, what I've got here is got my tripod set up and on top of the tripod, I've got the Nodal Ninja Easy Leveler 2, uh, which again is an absolutely brilliant piece of kit. Uh, I use it for my, obviously my 360 photography, but I also use it for my normal photography as well, just to make sure that my camera's nice and level. Um, so first of all, what we need to grab is the lower rotator. Okay, um, and that basically just screws onto here. Now, the great thing with this new design, um, the, old, the older one basically, I think it had the, uh, the sort of controller unit 
on the side here, or the bat I think they're also battery as well. Um, and that would have sort of imprinted quite quite a lot on the Nadir shot. Um, but this here, if you can see, if I just hold it there, if it will focus, I'll give it a go. There we go. Um, is quite a small imprint, okay, which is really, really, really nice. Uh, it just gives you the, the peace of mind um, that you're not going to have a massive Nadir imprint. Um, you can also use the uh, Nadir adapter on this if you want to. I personally don't use a Nadir adapter. I just remove my um, tripod in uh, Affinity Photo. So, um, so yeah, that goes on there. Um, and then what we will do is grab the upper part, okay, which is here. And um, that basically just screws onto here, which is to make sure that this bit is up slightly. Um, and then we just lock that in. Uh, and again, like with all Nodal Ninja heads, um, it's got these uh, stoppers on there, which basically are very, very important for when you find your no parallax point. Uh, so once you've found the no parallax point, you basically just put these stoppers, uh, lock them in place, and then you can, you, you're, you're sort of rest assured that uh, you're gonna have that no parallax point uh, locked in every single time, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna grab my camera. Um, I'm using the, this is the Sony uh, A7 three it is yeah yeah because I've, I've got the a7 IV as well which i'm filming on now um, and then also i've got the samyang um, 12 millimeter f 2.8 fisheye lens which i absolutely love i've seen quite a few posts recently from people asking what the best lens is for full frame um, not specifically sony but any brand really uh, i always recommend people look at this seriously uh, you can use the canon fisheye um, but it's insanely expensive and so unless you're, you know, you're willing to pay that amount of money, which is, which is fine, um, I, would, uh, I would highly recommend looking at this one uh, because to my eye, I've looked at the pictures from both and this is, the Canon's probably a bit sharp, a tiny bit sharper, um, but for the price, I really don't think it's worth, worth paying the extra for, so, you know. Um, so what we need to do first of all um, is turn the units on. We just hold the button down. Um, it takes a little bit of time for it to start up. Um, I will show you um, some close-ups of the control, the control unit and sort of how to go through the menus and the settings and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but do bear in mind, I, even though I've used it for a few weeks, I am still learning. Um, it is quite a complex unit to use. Uh, but you have got the app as well, which I'll also do some screen recording of so, you, so I can run you through how the app works uh, and what you can do with that. Um, so we just got a couple of beeps, just waiting for it to say ready. And there we go, it says ready. So um, what I'm gonna do here is just push the power button once um, and then that gives us the ability to move this rail. So I'm just gonna move, push the up arrow and that's going to rotate the arm out. Bang, there we go. So that's now uh, level. Um, Nodal Ninja, call these different positions different things. So uh, this is the level position. When this is pointing up with the camera pointing down, if it's mounted on there, that's called the raise position. And then when it's down here, that's called the parked position. Okay. Uh, and you can set um, presets to start photographing from those positions. So if you would prefer to do your Zenith shot first, um, then you can, you can do that and you just make sure that the preset is uh, set to start in the parked position, okay? Um, so what we'll do is we'll attach our camera, like so. Now this is set up for my um, Sony a7 IV. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not really gonna be sort of showing any images from this uh, because the images that you take from this will be exactly the same sort of results as you get from a normal panoramic head. This is really just to show you, you know, how this is all set up and, uh, and how it works and so on and so forth. Um, so the camera is now attached. I'm just gonna keep it as level as I can. Okay, so then what we need to do is this plug here with the little square bit um, at the bottom, the thicker, thicker plug, that basically plugs into here, which is the lower part back of the lower rail 
And then what I normally do is tuck the cable up um, through the gap, just so the cable doesn't show up in any of the any of the shots. Uh, it's quite good to try and you know try and keep all your cables and everything that's going to show up in the image as tucked away as you can, um, just so you have less to less to remove in a Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Um, and then this bit here plugs into the camera itself. Hopefully I'll get the right ones. So it just plugs in here, just like so. Okay, so it's important to keep this cable here free um, and don't sort of wrap this one up at the back here. Uh, just just there because this obviously needs room to move when the camera is going up into the the um, raised position okay um, so there we go we are all set up um, now let's have a quick look at the uh, display panel so you can see uh, what's what's on there and how that all works okay so we can see the display panel here um, it's a really, really nice design. I mean, I think I, I much, much, much prefer it over the um, over the old design, which basically just had uh, numbers one, two, and three, and then some um, other sort of you know, plus and minus buttons and everything like that. Um, so this this basically gives you a lot more information to work from. Um, so what you basically get is you've got um, your programs here that you can program different um, functions into. So this particular one that I've programmed uh, is for specifically for my 12 millimeter fisheye lens. Um, what it is possible to do is to have the head automatically measure um, how many shots it's going to need um, for, for, to take a full 360 image, depending on what lens you've got on there. So you can basically plug in the, uh, the focal length. So say for example, if you're working with a 50 millimeter lens, it will basically scan the, uh, the, the, the area and you can set the overlap of each image. So say for example, you wanna have a 25% overlap, which I've got set here. Um, it will then figure out from that how many shots it's gonna to need to complete a full 360 for a spherical image. Um, then um, I've got a preset for the 50 millimeter here. I will be showing you in a minute um, this working uh, on a 360 image uh, with a uh, with with this 12 millimeter fisheye lens, and then also I'll show you with a 50 millimeter lens as well um, what it can do. Uh, I have tried using this for um, normal panoramic panoramic photography, and it works very very well for that uh, sort of multi row panoramas. Um, so so to to launch a preset, what you basically do is come onto it and then push this middle button here. And then it will ask you to set the position. So you basically, that'll give you the opportunity just to move, um, move these. Okay, you push the up button and it will move the camera up. Push the down button, it'll move the camera down. And then you push the middle button here and it will start the, start the program for you. I'm just gonna push the power button there and just cancel that for now. Um, so you've got plenty and plenty of slots available. Uh, within these, you've also, if you move up and down, you've got, uh, 10, I think it's 10 slots per, per number. So you can, you can program in a massive amount of presets into here. So you know you've got everything ready to go uh, once, you've, uh, once you've set it up. So as I mentioned before, you have also got the ability to control this via the app. So I'll just grab my phone and I will bring up the app on the screen for you right now so we can take a look. So what you need to do is um, come onto your Wi-Fi um, and then when you search for the Wi-Fi, you'll see here that we've got Mecca 66DF13. So we'll click on that and wait for it to stop spinning. There we go. And now if we come back out of here, um, I've got this bookmarked. There we go. So the website address that you need to go to um, is at the top, so it's 192.168.8.1. Uh, and then we'll wait for that to, to connect and load up. Okay, right, so now that's connected. 
Um, so you can see on the screen that the app is laid out really, really well. Okay, um, you've got a lot of information on there. Um, but the great thing is, is that you've got this info button in the top left hand corner. So you can click on that. Um, they have done an update recently and I'm not sure why it's not showing on here. Uh, might be a different uh, website address that you need to go to, but it does give you the ability to edit um, these uh, sort of abbreviations. So you, so it makes a bit more sense to you um, because obviously W, B, M, it can be a bit difficult sometimes to, to remember what all those are for. Um, so just running through these features, uh, you've got the left and right, which um, gives you the option of shooting your panorama, starting moving left or right, um, closing the title. And, and then you've also got your um, live NPP, uh, which is basically going to run you through finding your no parallax point. So the camera will automatically move to the edge of the frame so you can see if your parallax is off then it will move to the um, opposite side of the frame and you can set your no parallax point from there, which is, which is really, really good. Um, and then you've got the first main feature of a shooting pattern or a preset, uh, which is TRG, which is the number of triggers for each camera position. Um, so basically I normally have that set to one just to trigger the camera once. Because uh, what I would do is I shoot in automatic HDR mode, so continu or continuous HDR mode, um, and you only need one trigger control for that. Um, then the next one is your focus. Uh, so I'm using the um, Samyang 12mm lens, uh, which is a manual focus lens. So I've got this set to MF, um, but you can set a um, autofocus um, signal time on there just to allow for, for how long it takes for your camera to focus. But I would recommend shooting a manual focus for 360 shots anyway. Um, and then you've got the W, which is basically the, the, the wake. So that's basically gonna be the, the time that it takes for the camera to wake up from sleep mode. Okay, um, so I normally just set that. It, it doesn't take two seconds for my camera to wake up from that, but it just gives you a bit more time um, to, uh, to allow that. Um, B, it's before, so that's basically the pause before each trigger se sequence. So it will basically wait five seconds um, before it starts shooting. So that, the, the, the good thing with that is that if you're using a, a tripod, especially with a extending center column, uh, once this camera has moved round, it can sometimes wobble slightly. Um, so it's good to sort of have a pause before it takes the shot, just to let the camera sort of calm down, okay? The modifier of exposure, uh, I, I, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what this does, but I've got, I've got this set to, to one, I think is what it came set up as, uh, and that's worked absolutely fine for me. But as I said, it is described here exactly what it will do. Um, and then you've got your exposure, which is the E. Um, that is, but this is quite an important one, um, especially if you're shooting in uh, HDR or you're doing bracketed shots. Uh, this is basically how long the shutter duration is. Now, you do have the option of plugging a, um, another shutter cable in here uh, that you can connect to the camera. So that will basically recognize when the, uh, the exposure is finished and then it will start moving on from there, but I don't have that cable. Um, so what I need to do is look at the, basically the, if I'm in a dark room, I'm gonna need to click on this and then extend this time, okay? Um, because otherwise the camera's going to start moving again before the, the exposures or the shots have been taken. Okay. But I normally find from the majority of rooms, it's never going to go above three seconds. Um, the, the, the exposures, especially if I've got my camera set to something like, you know, ISO 640 or something like that. Okay. And then you've got a, which is after, so it's the delay after each trigger sequence. So I'd have that set to zero. So once the trigger sequence is finished, um, it just carries on straight away. Uh, you could link that with E if you wanted to extend the time a little bit longer. Uh, so generally, as I said before, three seconds is, is absolutely fine for the majority of rooms, even the darker rooms. 
Um, and then 60 shows you the degrees of rotation um, to each position in a sequence. So I shoot six shots going around. Um, so that's, that means that's, that's the reason why it says it's 60. But this is the other huge, huge benefit, or one of the benefits of having one of these, is that with a manual rotator, you, you, you're limited to the amount of clicks that you've got going around. Um, I know with the Node Ninja 6, the RD10 rotator that goes on the bottom of that, um, there are quite a few options to choose uh, what sort of clicks you want and how many degrees for it to stop at and click into. But with this, you literally, you can set anything. So you could do one shot every five degrees if you wanted to. So that's an absolutely fantastic feature and one of the benefits of this. Um, just to go into a few other benefits actually whilst we're talking about that. Uh, what I've found is that when I'm shooting with a, with a manual uh, head, um, you need to be very careful of your shadow first of all. So if you're moving, say if I'm standing in front of a window, which I've got behind the camera here, um, and you're moving, sort of moving around, you, I've fallen foul of this before myself. You know, I've, I've sort of been standing with my back sort of behind the camera and you can see there's a sort of a shadow on the wall that's being cast by yourself. Um, with an automated head, you can basically just set the camera, leave the room, click on the app, let the, let the camera do its thing. You're not in the room, so you're not casting any shadows. Um, also, it's really handy for small rooms. Uh, if you're doing, say, like a, an ensuite bathroom or something like that that's really, really small, um, you, I generally find that I have to, you know, go, go into the room, click on the shutter, start the shot on a self-timer, 10 seconds, leave the room, shut the door, wait for that shot to finish, go back in, move the head, take another shot, wait 10 seconds but out, outside the door, and it just takes ages. Um, so being able to control this automatically from outside the room and just let the, let the camera do its thing is another huge, huge, huge benefit. Um, I think for normal rooms, I have timed it, and obviously I've got quite a lot of experience with, with 360 photography and using manual heads. Um, I, I can probably do it quicker manually, um, but I think that's, that goes against the point of this. Uh, this is basically just making life easier for you. Um, and also, as I covered before, you've got the, um, the side of things where you don't necessarily have to be in the room, okay? Um, so moving on, the rest of these things are uh, number of moves, I don't have that, I've, 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 not, I've not really changed that. So I think what that will be is uh, how many times the camera is going to do its rotation. Um, rewind to initial position, uh, that's really handy. So that basically, you can click on this and you can set it to wait or rewind. So if you set it to wait, then when it's finished its thing, it will wait in the position that it finishes at. Uh, for, for me, that's the um, nadir shot, so the camera will, will stop pointing down. Rewind basically just goes back to its initial position again, so it's ready to shoot again. So most people are going to have it set to rewind. Um, delay. This one here is a repeat. So delay in seconds until shooting sequence will be repeated automatically. Uh, so yeah, I'm guessing that's just to just to repeat the shooting um, pattern again, um, and then the rest of this is the script. Uh, so this is these figures here, uh, SL. So that's basically saying that I want the camera to start in the level position, uh, and then it's going to take six shots, um, and then you've got the zenith shot, and then n times two is the nadir, two nadir shots. Um, so many of you may have seen before that when I'm taking my Nadir shots, I take one shot pointing down and then I rotate the camera 180 degrees facing the opposite direction and take another shot. And that enables me to Photoshop out this, this vertical um, armor here, okay? And then you've got the speed. So you can change the, um, the, the speed that the uh, rotator rotates at which is again, really, really handy. If you are using a, I mean, this is quite a sturdy tripod. I've got a new one now, uh, but the one I'm filming on here uh, is, is quite flimsy. 
So uh, you can actually slow down the rotation speed uh, just to try and reduce the amount of uh, camera shake that you get when it's, uh, when it's moved to its next position. And then you can change the load. So if you're using a heavy load, um, then you can, uh, you can put a motion profile, as it says on there, to, to account for the extra weight. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, as you see, there is, there is quite a lot of information on here uh, and it can be quite daunting. Uh, I found it incredibly daunting and I still do. Um, but you know, as I said, I'm slowly getting used to it. And uh, it's, uh, I, you know, I think they do seem to be making some updates and changes to, to the app. I would like to see a bit of a, a user interface change on there um, just to make things a bit easier, a bit quicker to use. Um, but you know, generally it works, you know, it works very, very well. Um, if you want to load a preset, you basically come down to this part here, click on presets, and then I've got all of my pre you know, presets um, put in here. The one I generally use is this one here, which is basically just click on that one then click load. And then it puts all of your information in here. Okay. Um, so let's have a quick look at this camera in action on the Nodal Ninja Mecha. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set this, uh, I've got my preset loaded in um, and all of my settings here are, let me just double check, that's a B is five seconds, E is three. So this is, this is what I was saying is this, I still don't remember which one is which. So B five seconds, I don't think we need to have this set for so long. So set that to two. Okay, so I think two seconds will give the camera enough chance to uh, to s slow stop any wobble. You can see here there's not really much at all and it does slow down quite quickly. Okay, so let's set it to go to the right. Click that, you'll hear a beep. There we go, first shot taken. And it's going to rotate. Next shot. There you go. So you can see it's nice and it's nice and sturdy. Um, it's, it's it's not too loud, which is which is really really nice. Um, there we go. So now it's doing the zenith shot, and now it will move itself up to do the nadir shots. That's one, and then it's going to rotate 180 degrees and take the second one. Boom, done. Now it's finished. There we go. It's going back into the level position and back to where it started. Okay, and then from there, beep, beep, it tells you that you are ready for your next shot. So, you know, I think you'd agree that is, that is very straightforward, um, that side of things. I don't think you need to worry too much about the, the you know, the, the layout of the, the app and the menus on the side and all that sort of stuff. Um, as I said before, if you want to um, set it manually, if you don't want to use the app, um, you literally just come onto here and then you can, um, just to let you know, you can actually change these presets from the display. So um, I think you basically just click on the plus button when you're in a preset and then you can change all the parameters of the preset from there. So we just click on it once, it will say set position and we can make sure that we're all level. Um, in fact, that arm is slightly off, but it doesn't really matter. And then we click on it and then it will run that program for us. Okay, so if you don't want to use the app, you don't have to. Um, as long as you've got your, um, your preset programs on here, uh, which if you've done it on the app, it should be on there anyway. Um, and yeah, you can, just, you can just set it to run from there. I think this preset is, does five shots around instead of six shots around, because again, that's the beauty of this head, um, is that if, if, if five shots is enough, which it is for, for a 12 millimeter lens, some people actually shoot four shots at 90 degrees each, I personally don't like doing that because I have found the stitching to be not as reliable. Um, so 
you know, the, the presets that I've got, I think it's this one, we'll find out in a minute. Yes, there you go. So that's only taken five shots, um, which is great because then if I'm bracketing, it just reduces the amount of shots that, that, that I need to take. So it saves my shutter um, and it saves my space on my hard drive as well, which is really, really good. So um, that's almost finished its sequence. The one thing I have found on this, and I'm going to be brutally honest um, with the head, is that the, I'm finding it difficult to ensure that this, this rail here, when it's doing the Nadir shot and the Zenith shot, is completely vertical. Uh, I know that there is a setting. You're done, good. Uh, there is a setting on there uh, which does involve the micro stepping as well. So you can basically fine tune exactly uh, what is level and what isn't. Um, so you, you have got a huge amount of granular control over how the head is positioned. Um, but because it is robotic, um, there, there is, I, I have found that there has been some times when it, it still doesn't look straight. So I don't know whether it's gone back to another preset or I've, I've probably done something wrong, to be honest. Um, but I am still getting used to that. I found obviously if you're shooting manually, then you, manual is, is great because you know you can be 100% accurate because you just screw in exactly where you want, want it to be. Um, but as I said, you know it's probably just user error. In fact, it's definitely user error. Um, and I'm gonna be adjusting it more um, I have, for my professional shoots, I've still been using the Nodal Ninja 6 manual head with the rotator, um, just because obviously I don't want anything to go wrong. Uh, but I, I am gonna carry on using this. Uh, I'm definitely gonna buy one. Uh, this hasn't been given to me. They are, very, they are quite expensive. And I will put the, uh, the pricing and everything up on the screen for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the benefits for me are definitely, definitely there. Uh, so I, I will definitely be purchasing one myself. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just show you a quick uh, setup with a 50 millimeter lens on there, just so you can see how that works. So uh, let's have a go at that. Okay, so I've got the 50 millimeter lens set up here. Uh, in fact, it's actually a 55 millimeter lens. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the, um, just grab my phone, I'm going to run the preset um, for, that I've got set for the 50 millimeter. Um, I won't be making you watch through the whole thing because as you can imagine, there are quite a lot of shots involved here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll run the preset um, and then I'll speed the video up just so you can see the shooting pattern um, and how it works. But this again is another beauty of, 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 this, um, of this panoramic robotic head is you can literally program in anything. Um, so to do this with a manual um, head would take an incredibly long time. Um, and you know, you've got, you've just got the peace of mind um, that you've literally just set the preset let it do its thing. Um, so for gigapixel sort of 360 photography, this is an absolute no brainer, this head. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's run the preset. So I'm just gonna check the settings on here. Uh, I don't want a five second pause before each trigger sequence, otherwise this is gonna take hours. Um, there we go, yeah, just one second, that is absolutely fine. Okay, so, okay, let's run this preset, see what it does. Okay, so we've got the first shot, small rotation, another shot. There we go, so. Let's see what it does.
there we go. So I think you'll agree that was, uh, it was quite a long process. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to summarize really uh, just what my thoughts are about the Nodal Ninja Mecca. Um, I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, as I said, there is quite a big learning curve to it, uh, but that's to be expected. You know, it's a robotic panoramic head. Uh, it's very complex, you know, the, the functionality is very in depth and that's what we want. You know, we, we want to have that, um, you know, control over, over the head itself. So, um, as I said, I am going to be buying one myself. And, you know, if any of you, are interested in buying one. Uh, if you're based from the UK, uh, I got this head from Red Door VR. Uh, I can highly, highly, highly recommend them. Um, I've used them for years and years and years. Staff there are absolutely fantastic, so I'll put a link to their website in the description below. Um, if you're outside the UK, I mean, I think Red Door probably ship abroad as well, so uh, definitely worth checking their website out anyway. Give them the support. Um, you can also get it directly from the Fanatec website, uh, Pano Society as well, you can look at. Um, so, yeah, apologies if I haven't covered absolutely everything. Uh, you know, as, as you can appreciate, it would, it would take me hours and hours to cover absolutely every function of the camera itself. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I hope I've covered enough just to give you an idea as to how the Mecca works. Uh, if you have got any questions, then please do feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be informed of any other videos uh, that I have got coming up. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time and take care.